What's up, everyone? It's your boy Nornrad89 here with my buddy Steve here to discuss season three. We are now on to season three of Courage the Cowardly Dog, where we'll be talking about the first three episodes. So how you feeling, Steve? Ready to go through season three now? I can't believe we're already halfway done now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, huh? It did kind of breeze by pretty fast as nuts, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we took some breaks here and there because of life, you know, in between. But even then, it's like, I guess, you know, when you do three episodes, each chunk, it's going to go by a little quicker, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And this was a good grouping of episodes. And there's actually one I noticed that I seen before, like when I watched it, like as it was playing, I was just like, oh, I totally remember this one. So it'll be fun when we get to that one, too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was a fun. I I don't know if I remember any of them in particular. Um, you know, I guess maybe my head watched as much of the show as I thought I did as a kid, but that happens in the pre like DVR era of television. You don't really you didn't really know if you watched them all or not. Yeah. Or you end up uh, catching like the same reruns over and over, so it feels like you've watched more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Uh yeah. So what did I then? Let's do a segment one of episode one, which is Muriel meets her match, right? A pair of married criminals are on the run and they camp next to the farmhouse with one of them eventually assuming Muriel's identity, which leads Muriel being framed and arrested. Courage must clear Muriel's name. So this one was kind of kind of really a little bit creepy, a little interesting, huh? Some cool stuff going on in this one, right? Yeah, I love the sort of like, yeah, the body snatcher vibes a little bit. The um or just like the doppelganger sort of you know uh, mythology or you know stuff that they're playing with they do a lot of uh theft episodes don't they yeah it's a lot of the episodes have to do with like you said greed money thieves that's a very big uh heavy recurring plot point that they use a lot in the episodes and stuff (laughs) yeah yeah and um and i love uh with the um the hand (laughs) What's the hand's name? Oh, I can't remember the hand. The hand part of it, it was it was at the end, right? Um, yeah, the I don't remember that part. I remember her like the whole like setting up, and she's like asking Muriel for all the stuff where they keep all their like the deed and her all her stuff, and she slowly dyes her hair. She's like copying her like as she's watching yeah. her. She's like slowly copying all her, mimicking her movements and stuff. <laughs> I thought that was fun, you know. I sort of, I I do love like a doppelganger story. I mean, this is a little bit more like it's like a weird mix, right? Of like a doppelganger story, body snatch, like taking your identity sort of thing. Um, like there's his. I mean, I, did you ever watch the uh, the Twilight Zone episode of like the woman at the bus stop, and she's like convinced I don't think that I've it's seen the, that one. Yeah, it's a doppelganger episode. Twilight Zone is a woman at a bus stop trying to get away from her doppelganger, and she's convinced that this woman is trying to like take over her life okay yeah it's really cool um <laughs> I, yeah but i just love stories like that and i I like the design um of our uh of uh, maria maria um, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah she's sort of forming in and like the glowing eyes and again sort of a point, another you know calling attention to like some of the really cool animation that they're doing here yeah. as well um they do a lot of stuff with like lighting and like really stark contrast with like the coloring yeah definitely and i like the fact that it's just this one kind of involves like with courage going to rescue muriel having to you know like to clear her name i like that aspect eustace kind of gets thrown onto the side because they distract him with the whole tv thing so he gets you know thrown off to the side and everything kind of a little bit (laughs) all right his motivation is always like yeah like tv a diamond money right yeah (laughs) all the stolen stuff but i love again this is highlighting how trusting muriel is like to a fault um yeah and then how and then even like you know eustace like you know how rigid he is to a fault right but like you know in a weird way it sort of keeps him from getting in trouble in a certain way like their their faults are very much like opposite but get them into equal trouble I know that's what's kind of interesting is like, you know, even if they have their side plots or the things, it's like, yeah, sometimes Eustace or Mary will get pulled into it. But mm-hmm. like I said, that balance of almost, you know, because of his attitude and the way he is and how she is and everything, it just has a certain balance to it. 
Well, that's why I feel like, you know, this this episode definitely highlights where Courage almost feels like, a, yeah, he's like a solid balance between the two characters, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in the sense of like, right, if you look at their character traits, you know, he's all, he's sort of like is able to see what they can't see, um, whether it's like Muriel's sort of aloofness, her trusting that, you know, her, her over trusting her, like all that <laughs> like, just kind of blinds her, whereas in, you know, Eustace is blinded for other things and he can kind of see through that. So it's really yeah. kind of cool, you know, we sort of like, you know, a- animals aren't uh, tainted by, and there's a lot of interesting things <laughs> about dogs themselves, I noticed in this batch of episodes. Like yeah, there's a lot of true. like statements, like there's a lot of like theses within the episodes that like highlight like courage is like dogness as like a strength, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> I know that's what's cool too. It's like, yeah, when you think about it, he's like, that he's very loyal, trusting, brave. He's got all these great qualities that you want in, like you would want in a pet or even a person. Like they, those are great qualities you'd want in a person too. So yeah. I like the fact that we lean heavy into the dog aspect being the best friend, you know, and really a loving creature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another funny moment I love is you know, <laughs> she they open the door and she thinks um, it's like her cousin Harold. And I'm like, oh boy, we're getting more family members. Or just, I love that she just sort of assumes it's a family member or whatever. You know, she can't. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you know, this. Well, I w- honestly would not be surprised if we had more surprised like um, family members coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> they always got like a weird cousin or an aunt or an uncle or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Niece and nephew. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, this no, is a great, a great start for the season three, I think, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, high speed chases, right? I mean, I thought I enjoyed sort of the whole arc of this one. And then at the oh, end yeah. of the, at the end of it, like Yusuf was like, "Well, they, they gave us good uh, TV reception. I missed them." <laughs> <laughs> but, Would you uh, like to get into our next segment, Steve? Sure, 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 sure. Uh, courage versus Mecha courage. I love me a good Mecha story. Um, <laughs> Geelong, who uh, is who's returning, uh, feels that Courage is not a good enough dog and builds a mechanical version of him as a replacement. Courage decides to stop him by a fight. So yeah, so a uh, recurring um, Geelong, who um, I remember what his other episodes were. Um, he's been in a couple yeah i think this is mm-hmm. i want to say this is the third time we've seen him at least i think this is yeah. like the third time he's been around <laughs> and he's like sort of like yeah like the like a cool dude cool bro kind of um techie know, character know. more modern up to date like at this time he would be like was it the i don't know what it is the gen z or millennials but he would be the more up-to-date version the techie kind of character for now at like, that time you know he's giving me like crypto bro you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like that time, <laughs> that, you know, Crypto Bros today, whatever that would have been in like 2001. <laughs> 2000, that's, yeah, that's know. what I'm <laughs> telling everyone they got to invest in who knows what, right? Um, yeah. Like, that's just sort of the vibe I get from him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I really dug this one, this sort of idea of like, you're not a dog, you're not in, good enough of a dog. Like, just like that. I love that as a concept, um, uh, challenging courage here, right? Because Courage isn't like your typical dog, obviously, right? But yeah. that's like, like I was just saying, is like that is generally like a strength of his. Because oh, yeah. he's not your typical dog, right? I know. That's what's so cool is I love that fact that courage is like, you know, he, there's so many elements to him besides the fact that it's just his characteristics, the choices he makes and all these things, but also his funny mannerisms and everything. It's like, these levels and all these things that you just kind of like an onion you peel back and you learn a little bit more about courage like every episode and it's kind of like said it just grows and grows and makes you love the character even more yeah absolutely and i love (laughs) and just to get into the episode itself like i love um this the the concept of him going toe-to-toe with a a robot version of himself like clearly they're also like commenting on like you know replacing things with technology right yeah which is um, something big now that's definitely a big thing now for sure yeah. yeah so this is like an early version of them tapping into that of like you know a robot dog well if you have allergies that'd be fine right um it, you know it can't really replace a dog right like that the sort of like that love and sort of that compassion and that companionship um oh yeah like because yeah, because when you think about it, in essence, like a machine, a mecha dog, it's going to be, there's a lot of positives, but like I said, it's going to be cold. 
you can't mm-hmm. cuddle with it. It's different. You know what I mean? Like you said, there's days where you want your dog to be more like said human. You want like your dad, your dog might have a down day and you want to take care of your dog. You know, it's kind of vice versa a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like you can program um, an AI to do anything. Right. But that doesn't mean it's genuine. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's you know, beholden to its code. So we get all matrix and who knows, right? <laughs> and then you know, we can get into that, but that would be interesting. I would I would I this is why I would love a courage reboot. I would really love to see these writers tackle the changes that a lot of these concepts have seen over the years. But I'll have to say I sort of enjoy the the showdown happening in like a coliseum. That it was cool, the gladiator me, style. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of um, almost like a like a joke about like uh, battle bots. You ever yes, see BattleBots? Battle bots, yeah. We, <laughs> so my husband and I love battle bots. It was on ABC for like, like years ago, got canceled, and now it's been on for the last like six or seven years. It's been on the Discovery Channel. So we've been following for years now. Like nice. uh, I've, I've got a favorite team. They don't do that great, but I still love their gimmick. Uh, go hypershock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got but, you. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you got it. But I sort of love this idea, right? It made me think of battle bots. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool. Yeah, that he finally just like showed him down, and then was like basically outlasted the mech. Right? He outlasted the mecha because the mecha just the battery ran out and just died out. So basically, courage just kept going and didn't want to give up <laughs> yeah yeah and then, then yeah. the emperor's like okay <laughs> yeah uh, gives the ruling and um yeah no, i love it and then so obviously we get a um you know towards the end there's a commercial for like the techno dog um yeah he's saying that he wants to get one um and then you know and courage good gives out a whole you fool and that's it <laughs> <laughs> and mario's like yeah, it can't be replaced like she has courage right there on her lap just like relaxing <laughs> yeah a uh, little trivia like well you know uh, the title could be a reference to godzilla versus mechagodzilla yeah um you know so that's there yeah, there's a little 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 reference there for our kaiju fans um <laughs> and then what else minor swearing i think I, did you catch did they did you hear them say ass in this I don't think I caught that. I'll have to watch this episode again. No, I think I watched I this one after twice. I'm reading this because it, it's mentioned in like the parental like ratings for the show or for like uh, in like the parental comments. I didn't go after having read it. I missed it. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't go. I didn't I didn't have a chance to go back and listen. But I'm like, if they say it, I'm not, I, would, I would be a little surprised. I but, know. That is crazy. I have to put the subtitles on too next time I watch it. Sometimes I watch them with the subtitles on because I have yeah. kids and it gets noisy just so I could read the text. Oh, I put on subtitles because my ADHD. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> if or I, sometimes, like, me, I'm, yeah. It helps you? Yeah. Well, it helps me just to kind of focus on it if I have to, you know. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for me, HBO Max, like I've noticed, like for some reason, when I stream HBO Max, it's like it doesn't, the volume isn't up to par with some of the other stuff fair yeah yeah you know that's one of those yeah. like it's you know max is one of those streaming services where they have a little bit of, like some jankiness to it um max and um paramount plus is a little weird for us too sometimes those apps yeah. can be a little wonky but um yeah right for episode two uh yes let's hit it up let's see where are we at oh campsite all right. Oh, yeah. Camp site of terror. Courage and his owners go to a campsite for the weekend. All seems well until Courage and Mario encounter two orphaned lonely raccoons and, be- and who beat Courage up and tie him to a tree before they kidnap Mario so that they can be better be their mother while asking while also taking all of Courage owners personal belongings in the process. So this one was uh, this one was kind of fun. I love camp settings. Camp vibes are all, you know me, yeah. camp crystal lake stuff. <laughs> this was this had a little bit of um like uh like you know some heartstrings to it. Like some uh I don't know, it had a little bit of a uh, sent there was some sentiment behind it, I which I really appreciated. Um, yeah, this one I didn't feel like they were uh there's no really villainous characters. Like I said, this was one of those things where it's just kind of characters meeting a little bit of misunderstanding, but at the end, it's like, it's not as, you know, bad or anything as you thought it was. <laughs> no, this was like, you know, similar to like the Sasquatch episode or, um, 
was a couple a couple of uh the shadow episode yeah yeah the shadows has watch the right i love sort of the misunderstood villain stories because this is where like courage's and muriel's hearts really shine you know is they're able to sort of like you know see what people need and like speak to their inner you know yeah their inner needs yeah uh no it's really in the end they just really sort of wanted like you know family or friends you know and um and he's wanted to watch <laughs> watch TV with him. Yeah, I know. I used to got so upset because like that's something I feel like every time I see him get so upset about anything with the TV or like the antenna or like the couch and stuff. I kind of feel like that's that's like softcore me because like I'll just that instant moment when you walk in there and there's like something wrong with it. The remote's missing. This, this, that. But the raccoon characters I thought were great too. Like those little the little designs and their little skeevy eyes, like different color yeah. eyes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Absolutely um no i love them i love it it was you know it was just so cute and i think um yeah there was a there was a point in it i'm trying to remember in my notes they um no yeah well, i don't think it was this one where they referenced i was thinking there was another like dog theme to it but um yeah I, again i think it's just coming to again like understanding like the inner needs and i think there's a lot of like you know like what makes a dog a dog and there's sort of a lot of like and we'll get to it when we get to like the stormy weather episode and things like that there's a through yeah. line of like looking at like what's inside versus the outside yeah so that's what makes me think too is i wonder if what before they started the seasons if they kind of had like you said a very much uh kind of thought that they wanted to stream or string through all the episodes you know what i mean soft corely when you get I to the end of the I think so. I think when you definitely sit to plan a season, you definitely like, even if it's something like a, like a, a show like this, where a lot of the episodes are very standalone, um, you, you know, I think the artist and in, in, or the, you know, the writer and everyone in that room, you know, like probably wants to tell a bigger story. Uh, and they they're probably, so they probably do come up with a couple of pillar themes to play with yeah. that year. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I can totally imagine that. Yeah. And this one, like for me, I just, I kind of like said the soft core, just campsite setting the little joke of him trying to set up the tent and stuff. And then it falls down when he like sneezes into it. Just simple things for me. Like I would have loved more, like after watching this one, I would love more vacation, just camp episodes. Like I would just watch yeah. like a whole season of them on vacation kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would, if it would look. I'm gonna see if I can share. I just also just love the look of these raccoons, and I love this one with the iron knuckles. Hold on, let's see if I can share it. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, when they have their uh, when they came to get their weapons and their chains and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can see it. Too. Yeah, like look at them. <laughs> I know they're so cute. They're just mischievous. You can tell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just a freaking like the the clawed. Um, it's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so should we get out to part B? Yeah, part B. Yep, of episode two. Let's go. This is a record deal. So while spring cleaning, Shirley, you got to return up Shirley, finds a mystic velvet Vic record. When she throws it out, Eustace finds it. But when he listens to it, the actual velvet Vic comes out of the player and traps Muriel in the record. Courage must get help from Shirley, who can tell him how to get Muriel out of the record. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a fun one um i sort of love the the cursed record is such a is such a trope right i mean in, in terms yeah. of maybe we don't see it a lot of movies per se but that's like it's such an urban legend right you think about like satanic panic like if you play a record backwards it has a message or you play some right like the idea of like a mystical there's some mysticism in playing oh yeah record, right um <laughs> And, you know, and there's also just something so, like, analog. Of, I mean, literally, it is an analog kind of product. But um, something's just so, like, tangible and visceral about, like, physical music like that. You know, it's, yeah. you know, it's not the same as, like, you know, digital. I actually, I, I don't know if you, do you have vinyl still? I have, yes. um, yeah, we got a vinyl player. I have a bunch of, you can probably see them. Like, there's a little thing down here. Of like, all nice. my dad's old records are down there, so I have like <laughs> Beatles records, Jefferson Airplane. I got like a bunch of shit down there. Score, like, that's um, some good stuff. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. low key started like building up my vinyl collection, uh, like that one because my wife bought me a player for my birthday. So it's been building. It's been building. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's awesome. I know they make they make new vinyl, but I don't think they 
uh, my teacher was explaining it to me back in when I was in college. Like he was saying, like because they don't because they record it digitally, they're putting it on the vinyl. It does it's not going to have sort of the same texture textures, yeah, as like when you record analog through like you know old school mic and stuff, and and, and you're literally yeah. scratching it onto the vinyl, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's what things are different. But this was the, specifically this was the episode that I remember. I just once we saw Shirley again, and it was the Velvet Vic record. It like all just like came back to me. I was like, this is one of those ones I remember. And like, I just like said that trick or treat. That's the kind of vibe I got because there's an old mm -hmm. movie back in the day. That one. Oh yeah, when you play the record and you get the spirit coming out. So like it, it totally gave me vibes of that. <clears throat> yeah, and I like the fact that uh. What does he say when he gets sucked into the thing? He's like, oh, I can't remember. His, he has like a little one-liner every time he gets sucked into the thing. Oh, that was yeah, funny. what was his catchphrase? <laughs> he had a um, little catchphrase, but then then he ends up like said, trapping know. Muriel and stuff. And we end up finding out uh, who's a Vindaloo comes in this episode too. Dr. Vindaloo, Vindaloo helps them. Yeah. yeah, he like makes a copy of the record uh, to help. <laughs> but then Muriel comes out with two heads. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. And then when it, yeah, or when it's taped up, she comes out and she's like kind of backwards, taped up, upside down, and stuff like yeah, that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like funny. It's like um, almost a play on like when you try to like undo a spell in like a movie, you got to like do it the right way, otherwise you screw it up or something. There's yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, a little <laughs> lot of calls to some like magical tropes in storytelling here. Oh yeah. So this was a fun one to return to because I love all the reoccurring characters in this one. And I believe this was the one, too, where we had our our um, character that was just in the last one, our techie guy that built the mech. Long, He's in this yep. one. Too. He's huh? in the commercial. He's trying to get Eustace to give him his wallet and <laughs> send him all his money. <laughs> so funny. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of. So. Um, so parachute ladies in this as well. That's another little cameo. I think she shows up um, and there's a giraffe. I think <laughs> that so yeah, that kind of has like comes up in like other episodes. This is uh, and this is uh, Shirley's third appearance. So nice. I mean, she might have skipped. I can't remember. I don't know if she's had one per season or she ends up or she skipped a season in there. Yeah, I think no, I think she didn't have any in season two. She was in two, I think, in season one, and then in this one, she was in an episode. That sounds about right. Um, <laughs> but this marks Doctor Vindaloo's seventh appearance. Dang. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. the most reoccurring character for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this again, this was a fun one. Um, you know, not not heavy, spooky, but you know, has sort of mystical elements. Um, yeah. sort of playing on other horror tropes, even if it's not like directly like spooky, spooky. You know. Oh yeah, that's why I feel like yeah, a lot of these for these first three episodes, like I said, weren't scary spooky vibes but they had the where they pulled from the homages and the stuff that mm -hmm. they pulled from was all kind of supernatural-esque or sci-fi type stuff cool kaiju stuff right like yeah. really cool stuff um yeah, so you take us away with uh stormy all right. weather all right so stormy weather a storm goddess mistakes courage for her own dog, Duncan, and decides to take him, making Muriel furious. However, the goddess rage causes violent storms to occur. Courage must find Duncan before it is too late. So this one, this was a really cute one. I like the design of our character, Stormy, and like Muriel. Like their back and forth repertoire kind of thing that they were doing it was cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I loved it, too. I um. I sort of, yeah, I thought this was okay. So yeah, this is where I'm I'm referencing a lot of like again like the the deeper sort of themes of like what makes a dog a dog, right? Because obviously, very much mm -hmm. like she, you know, Duncan is failing her as a dog uh, by by the <laughs> end of it, right? And encourages like okay, so you know, obviously a dog's going to want their bone. Um, mm -hmm. I don't get into the end there, but uh, yeah, and and very much kind of mirroring right our sort of met courage themes here which i re which i really yeah. appreciate that through line um but yeah no i so I, I really do sort of love that and like kind of car again sort of courage and I, and I feel like this isn't the only episode where courage has sort of been like the object of someone's like obsession right yeah we've seen this before too yeah i feel like yeah this has been some kind of like through line that they're like he's 
he's one he's a special dog you know like there are characters that come into the show and they realize like oh he's special or even characters like um like cats who see courage and they're like oh well he's gonna foil my plan so i i need to get him out of the way <laughs> yeah absolutely um i even think of like eustace's mom really like especially in the early you know the, the, the first episode or so where she was very like super hyper focused on courage yeah i remember um, that too yeah so that's yeah. what's cool is like anything that has to do with I've noticed Muriel and Courage, that's a strong bond usually where it's just like that love. And like when somebody wants to take courage, like you see how Muriel gets like she gets she gets very agitated against her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and I really sort of love the. Um, the uh, which we call it the. Um, how courage sort of highlights like or the sorry so stormy's sort of obsession and love for courage here almost like opposite mirrors like muriel and eustace's well maybe more so eustace's like um disregard for courage yeah. you know and it's very oh, it's, yeah. it's a super highlights how like yeah they just don't get like you're like saying how special courage is yeah I think it's funny too, Duncan, her dog, like how she shows Miro the picture. She's like, don't they look just alike? He looked almost like, uh, he reminded me of like the lady, or no, dog pool. Like, he kind of like, but yes, like, you know, yes. like a pink version. <laughs> I do, yes, yes, like dog, 100%. <laughs> I love stupid looking dogs. I really, you know, I... <laughs> they're the cutest. Yeah, you want to love them so yeah. much more. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. It just sort of adds to that. Um, it's very, you know, it's a, it's an endearing thing. And like, and, and but again, like even then, it's like, so yeah, like Duncan to Stormy is sort of like courage to Eustace, right? Like mm -hmm. this idea of just not appreciating the dog you have, definitely. Um, yeah, and there's obviously a little bit of animal abuse there. We'll say. I mean, yeah, I don't know, we really <laughs> highlighted it out there, but it's called a spade a spade. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff that uses does the courage i'm like i don't know i, yeah. I want to call the authorities <laughs> <laughs> but uh you yeah, know but override it also kind of um because of the storm elements too I, it reminded me of the um, uh the water ghosts the water ep that episode okay yeah because we had like the constant like so that was that was kind of cool too yeah when it was raging and you saw muriel just stubbornly like i forgot what she was hooked to something at the house like with her foot and she was just like this all stubborn and they're like mm -hmm. arguing back and forth and there's like a tornado <laughs> the way that they animate storms is so cool in this show like any sort of weather something like phenomenons yeah it's amazing on this show <laughs> truly like yeah i don't know if this show ever got nominated for like best shit like animated you know show or something but like i hope it did i don't remember That'd be cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to go back and look. I don't know, but it would be, yeah. Um, anything else with Stormy? No, we can totally move on to the next Part one. Yeah. Uh, this one I really enjoyed. Uh, the I mean, yeah, this 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 double this 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 episode three with these two was really good. Sandman sleeps. It's part oh, B. Yeah. Um, Muriel develops insomnia after the Sandman steals her sleep. After several failed attempts to get Muriel back to sleep, Courage must find the Sandman in order to get her sleep back. Yeah, I love the, the irony, right? Of like, the Sandman can't sleep. So rather yeah. than giving sleep, <laughs> he takes it. That, that's, a, that's such a fun little concept. Oh, yeah. Even the little sheep that he's trying to count, he's trying to count the sheep. And even that one sheep is like, the irony. Like, that's like, like, <laughs> well, that's how I sometimes, that's how I feel with my son. I'm like, just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sometimes it's like, for some people, yeah, it's like not as easy. But I thought this one had a really good score. That's what spoke to me a lot was mm -hmm. I like the music to this one. The theme for the Sandman was really cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Was it this episode? Maybe I'm thinking it's the Sandman theme. There was a theme that almost sounded like the X Files. Do you know what I'm talking about? Was it this one? I'll have to go back. I have to really go back yeah, and watch that because it's been a minute. So, X Files. It's been probably like a good like eight years since I've kind of digested shows like that. But I would say this might be one of those episodes because it did have a very soft, just eerie tone to it. Like in terms of the music, this is probably like the scariest one we've had yeah. in these first three episodes. 
It, yeah, no, I think it might have been this episode. There was an episode where there was there's a few. It wasn't like the full, like a copy paste of the score from X Files. Yeah, just like a few there keys were, kind of thing. There were a few notes there, yeah, that sounded like the beginning of the X Files theme song. The do 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 sort of like. Um, but yeah, no, but either, either way, not to harp on that. But um, I love it. So he's counted six hundred and thirty-two thousand four hundred and ninety-nine sheep. Was yeah. the number that he had? Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I, said, I love how annoyed that the sheep were. Like, there's some of them are like out over there, like playing cards. Um, yeah, they look like they had insomnia. Their eyes were like this. <laughs> they were miserable <laughs> AF. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I thought this was really cute. And then, sort of the and then the design, right, of Muriel having insomnia. She just like the you know the way they 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 drew her with like lack of color. Um, yeah, the, the difference in her in her animation was really cool. The way that they kind of illustrated the lack of yeah. sleep, even a different like costume. You know, we're not used to her seeing like her outfit. She had like the over kind of nighty like sweater thing, and like kept her hair her hair net in. Didn't want to even yeah. like do her hair and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was kind of cool to see like how the details. Like that's what I mean. Details as the seasons have gone on, we've noticed that the little nuances and details that they sprinkle in the episodes. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, again, this is sort of a another misunderstood villain story a little bit in the, in the sense of like, you know, when they figure out like why, um, like it has to do with like the missing uh, Teddy bear. bear yeah, yeah, missing his, yeah. Bear. that was so cute that he found that right away because I was like, that's such like animals like animals are like that sometimes where they'll sit or they'll notice something and you're like what are you looking at or what are you doing and then they go under the bed and they mm -hmm. come out with something <laughs> well this is like I'm, that made me think like this is such a cute episode to show kids who struggle with sleep right because yeah. a lot of times like kid, it's something like a kid can relate to right is like that 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 comfort object the thing that they mm -hmm. take to bed with them right um this is it's just to take that concept and make it like the Sandman, even the Sandman needs, you know, a comfort item for sleep is just a really, really <laughs> sweet story when you think about it like that. Yeah. That's um, why I loved it too. Like his character, like you said, it wasn't threatening at all. You just wanted, you just wanted the resolution, but it, like I said, it's a good story. And that's why I like in these first three episodes, we didn't really have clear cut villains. We just had really great stories and we wanted to see the resolution and see these characters get some positive ends to the, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm sure, you know, this season, you know, it's only a fifth of the way done, right? We have lots of episodes. I'm sure we'll have some villains coming our way. But yeah. uh, this is cool, a cool way to start <laughs> the season. It's just like a lot of more internal conflict, misunderstandings. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, strong the, the, themes about your bonds with your pets and everything. So it's been a very good, strong story and themed episodes for these first three. Yeah, yeah, good character uh, explorations for sure. Definitely. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, these were so yeah, these were definitely a fun three. I'm, 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 I'm happy we're yeah, because I think what we like I said we missed a couple of weeks in there. I'm like happy we got back to it. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you want to highlight a little bit or like kind of tease what we got coming up for four, five, and six maybe? Oh sure, sure, sure um let's i'm gonna pull up uh of course i always like get rid of the episodes as i'm uh <laughs> so episodes four five and six we've got hard drive courage the rise of the valkyries Ooh. uh hard drive courage is Oh, hard drive. It's going to be a com the computer. It's yeah, that sounds more techie. Episode. It sounds like a techie one. Hard drive, uh, <laughs> and then Ride of the uh, Valkyries. So obviously we're referencing um, the opera, right? The song. Yeah, the opera, yeah. And we've got, I love this title, Scuba Scuba Doo. Um, oh, okay. Oh, so tease for a little Scooby crossover. <laughs> no, no. So Scuba, Scuba Diving. That's going to be a yep. fun one. Uh Conway the Contaminationist. Um, hmm. New character, maybe? A new villain, maybe? New villain. So the, the title card is um, sort of like one of those writing planes. They write in the sky, but it looks like it's pollution. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so maybe like a Fern, Fern Gully type villain. <laughs> yeah. Then we got Cats Under the Sea. So the return of cats. Nice. Um, and then we've got Curtain of Cruelty to wrap it up. Uh, oh, so that one looks, I don't know. I can't tell from the title card what the theme is. Um, 
Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I don't want to dive in. I don't have a short synopsis here. It looks like... Oh, this is going to be appropriate. It's a... It's a um... It's an election themed episode. <laughs> wow, to end off the thing. Nice. <laughs> it's, see, it's kind of weird. We've like been covering this show and it's nostalgia, but for some reason we've been finding little plot points all through the seasons that kind of call back to stuff that's happening like currently right now. Like that right, in right, the right. era that we're living in. <laughs> that's good writing though. That's 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 you yeah. know, that's a writer who is looking at, you know, the overall just culture. Bigger right? picture, yeah. The culture, yeah, the bigger you're, picture, you're culture, yeah. <laughs> Thinking ahead, right? So that's always a mark of a good writer. <laughs> Timeless writing. Hell yeah. We love it. So thank you, Steve, so much for tackling these first three episodes of Courage with me. We'll have all the links for Voices from the Mausoleum down below. Be sure you find that channel, subscribe, because we got the influential horror. Angel's doing influential horror all the time. Steve's got his um, horror heroes episodes that he drops and everything like that. So there's a lot of content over there. They recently just did an Ask Me Anything live stream. So make sure you go shoot over to the channel, too, to catch that. It's really fun. So that was a lot of awesome fun. I even caught some of it before I went to bed and oh, stuff. So it was cool. You. <laughs> yeah, we were, you know, and Angel was really worried we weren't going to get a lot of questions, but then we got got so many. <laughs> yeah, you got brave. We were like, yeah. oh my god, we got to the end. We got to the like, you know, an hour and a half end. We're like, oh, there's still so many. <laughs> Speed it up. Uh, now that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who showed up for that. Uh, but yeah, and then Coffee Crepts. Uh, we've had a little bit of a break on that one, but. Uh, after recording this, we're going to record a special one on Alien Romulus, so be sure to check that out this coming Sunday uh, oh, with yeah. your boy Norrin. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I know it's been a blast. I'm, I really do look forward to the coffee breaks, too. Those are fun. So yeah. thanks for sticking around with us, everybody. Hope you all have an awesome day and like, subscribe, all that jazz. You know, we always say that and everything. But like I said, most importantly, though, we want you to have a safe and happy day. Peace out. <laughs>